أن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهدي لا فلا مضل له وما يضل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله Praise the Lord to Allah We praise Him We seek His help And we seek His forgiveness From the evil of our own souls And our bad deeds Whomsoever Allah guides No one can lead astray And whomsoever Allah leads astray No one can guide And I bear witness That Allah is one Bearing no partner And that Prophet Muhammad وسلم, Is His final messenger Allah says in the Quran Ya ayyuhal ladhina wantaqa Allah Haqqa tuqatih Wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun Which translates as roughly O you who believe Fears Allah should be feared And die not Except in the state of Islam My dear respected brothers and sisters Inshallah today's khutbah is going to be a very short one Due to the limitations of the timing of the prayers um, And it's something that I wanted to keep it Very simplistic and practical So today's khutbah is going to be about the etiquettes of visiting your brother or sister. The idea came to me when I heard about a situation between two brothers. Let's call them brother A and brother B. Brother A is a student, you know, and he's very good in a lot of different softwares, okay? And brother B, he's struggling to, you know, learn one specific software. So he calls up brother A. And he says, Brother A, can I please ask for help? I need your help. I need some help, right? And Brother says, okay, fine. You can come over. I am free between 12 to 1 o'clock, okay? And Brother B, firstly, he comes at 11.30, right? And then rather than staying just from 12 to 1 o'clock, he stays there for two whole days. And obviously, this took a lot of toll on Brother A's time and management of his own work, right? And this is a true story. I'm just uh, concealing the identities, right? So I, from this, Yanni, I just started reflecting, surely there must be, you know, an adab in terms of how to visit people, adab of uh, visiting people with, uh, with respect and also respecting their time and resources, right? Because I know, alhamdulillah, we're always encouraged as hosts to, you know, accommodate guests to the best of our ability. We even had that, you know, very famous narration through which even ayahs are revealed, where a host family, um, they got some guests, and they didn't have enough food for everyone. So what did they do? They put their kids to sleep, right? And uh, they gave the food to their guests, and they themselves were acting as if they had food, but they didn't have anything. So alhamdulillah, this is a very good ideal example. But to maintain that ideality is not pragmatic. Islam is not a religion of idealism. It has an ideal physical principle state, but it's also a very pragmatic way of living. So I look into the Quran. What is the adab for both the host and for the guest? How should we respect and tolerate one another? And for those of you who, um, who, say, who want to check out the reference, the verse that this entire khutbah is based upon is in Surah Ahzab, verse 53, right? And for those who want to follow it up in the Arabic, it starts with, It starts with that, right? And then you can follow it up, inshallah, later on. So, we'll analyze this ayah, extrapolate a few points, okay? But first, I need to give you the context of when this ayah was revealed. It was revealed when the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He was married to Zainab bin Jahsh, right? And when the marriage took place He invited people for, you know the, the walima which we do We invite people for dinner and food and so on and so forth So he invited the Sahaba, okay? And he informed them that this is a walima We're gonna have some food and that's it Now the Sahaba, once they, some of them once they ate They immediately left but then some of them, they decided to stay on and on and on and on. And the Prophet ﷺ, obviously him being the most politest man in the world, he couldn't say anything to them. He couldn't say anything to them. So there's some narrations that say he left the house, you know, to give him a sign, maybe he's busy. And then he came back and they were still there. And he did this several times. I, they weren't getting the hint that it's time to leave. So because of this, this verse was revealed. Okay? This verse was revealed. So let's look what this ayah says, right? 
And like I said, I'm giving you a very brief overview. Inshallah, you can look into detail later on in the share book, so on and so forth. So, the ayah starts with, Oh, you have believed. I is referring to people of Iman, right? Do not enter the house of the Prophet except when you are permitted for a meal. So I told you, now you know where the context is, but we can derive a more general application. So when you go into a person's house, guests need to understand for what purpose am I going in this person's house. If the Prophet prescribed we're having a meal, so understand you're going there for a meal and then leave. Do what is the objective, what you're going for, and then don't waste people's time. And go, do what you gotta do, and leave. So if you look at the initial story of Brother A and Brother B, Brother A told him, I am free between 12 to 1 o'clock. Right? But did Brother B respect that? No. He stayed there for two whole days. He literally stayed in the house for two days. Right? This is mushkila, problematic. So you have to understand, what is my aim and priority of going into this person's house? And how long can I stay for? And then move on. Okay? That's, don't stretch on what is offered by the hosts. Always understand the limitation of the host. It then goes on to continue, right? The ayah goes on to continue, it says, And when you reach there, don't expect the meal to be ready on the spot. Don't expect it, and it's going to be there. Right? And if you think about it, look at the condition of the Prophet Muhammad He's got a couple of wives, right? He's a teacher, he's a general, he's also dishing out Sharia laws, he's teaching, etc. and so on and so forth. He is a busy man, okay? So when you go there, obviously it might not be the case that the food is going to be ready on the spot, you know? Give people that benefit of the doubt. Give people that lagging time that they deserve. Because if you go there with the highest expectations, okay, I'm going there, I expect this, etc. Like Brother B, he expected to get, I need you to teach me, boom, 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 this. Brother, he couldn't do that because there's a lot more that needed to be done, right? He also had his own prior engagements, right? And what you learn from that is give people some lag space. Don't expect the highest quality. Because you have to understand that the thing that they're giving you is more important than anything that can be offered. If you pay someone money, money can be replaced. You give food to someone, food can be replaced. But what they're giving you is their time. Time can never be replaced. So respect and appreciate that person's time that they're giving you in the first place. Respect people's time, right? Then they go, then the eye goes on. When you are invited, then enter, okay? So don't go into people's houses without permission, first of all. And also understand time punctuation. I mean, this brother that I'm speaking to you about, Brother B, he didn't come up at 12 o'clock. He came up at 11.30 half an hour before and brother A was busy with some other engagement that he had so now he had to struggle in keeping both sides happy you know be punctual learn to know when it's time for the permission to enter people's houses right I think and then, and then it goes on right and this is the very interesting part of the ayah when you have eaten i.e. when the sahaba have eaten then Disperse without seeking to remain for conversation. Here, Allah is telling Allah is telling you, when you have eaten, leave. When you have fulfilled the function of the event, leave. Okay? That's the main thing. Allah is this thing, subhanAllah, the most amazing thing. Your God is telling you how to behave when you go to people's houses. And that for me is right, amazing, brilliant, right? And, but there's a very interesting word here. The word that's used for disperse or scatter, in this ayah, okay, it is in tashiru, okay? And it, there are many synonyms for the word scatter or to disperse. One word in Arabic is in basa, right? In basa also means to scatter or to disperse. But there's a slight distinction between the two. In basa means when you disperse or scatter and you don't know why, you're just following the crowd. You don't know why you have left, right? But in Tashiru, which is used in this ayah, it incorporates that you know why you must leave. You know the reason why you're leaving. So, what does this tell you? That when guests go into people's houses, they should know when it's time for me to go. Yani if it's like 11.30 p.m., you're at your brother's house or your friend's house, and the host is like yawning, you know, he's like this, and you say, bro, let's play another FIFA match. Yeah, what is this? 
And you have to be smart enough to know your host is tired. I've gone past my due. It's time for me to go home. And we have to have emotional intelligence to be able to pick up the signals from our hosts who, mashallah, have given us at least some of their time. So respect them for that and leave when you think is right. Leave when you think is right. Yeah. Now, this, it then ends with a, with a very beautiful part. It says, indeed, that behavior, i.e. the behavior of those companions, that was troubling the Prophet ﷺ, right? And he is shy of dismissing you. Now this is one thing, the final point that you need to take into consideration. Your, your host will never tell you, get lost. He will never tell you, get out of my house. He will never say that to you, right? Because it is an act of courtesy to treat your guests with honor and respect. So when you're in people's houses, right, don't expect them to tell you, oh, it's time to leave. You should be able to be smart enough to know when it's time. And unfortunately, I'm just saying, as students, especially as students, you know, a meeting for like an hour from 6 to 7 can turn into a FIFA night till 3 a.m. in the morning. You know, I mean, that's a fact. I mean, and brothers are smiling at me and they know this is true, okay? So I know that for a fact, right? So very clear message from this ayah. As a guest, make sure that you respect your host's time. As a host, make sure you set the priorities of what the function is of this meeting. And this way is, inshallah, both parties can be happy, satisfactory, and everything can be in accordance with the Quran and Sunnah. قولي قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولك. And alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulullah. So, just wanted to wrap up this whole thing by a tradition in terms of respecting people's time. So we know from the Islamic hadith that there is a you know very famous story where the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, you know, he was praying and he was leading the jama'ah, and then he heard a baby cry. Right? He heard a baby cry. So he had the intention of praying a long prayer. Right? But what did he do? He shortened it. And the companions asked him, why did you do so? And he responded by saying, I heard that baby's cry, and I did not want to keep the mother away from her baby for too long. And he said, subhanAllah, what a beautiful story in terms of respecting people's time, right? Key message, take home message, practically learn to be emotionally smart, learn to be able to respect people's time management, and don't burden people. Do not burden people. Be very sensitive to people's time, right? And I mean, and this is one of my final point. Now I understand that in different cultures, in different cultures, you have different expectations. I understand that. So, yeah, and, and for example, I live with Kurdish people. Kurdish people, I and mean, they can go up to 3 a.m. and sing all night, and that's not a problem for them. That's expected with Kurdish people, right? In Pakistan, it's also a normal thing to be able to accommodate guests. You know, have tea late night, no problem. And different cultures vary from place to place. All I'm saying, this is a general guideline which you can find in the hadith, which you can find in the Quran. And inshallah, hopefully, just keep that into consideration along with your customs and context. And inshallah, may Allah make, make us all excellent hosts and guests for all the future endeavors that we have, inshallah. Um, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ala Muhammadin kama salli ala Rahima wa ala ala Rahima anaka minu mujib Azam barik ala Muhammadin wa ala ala Muhammadin kama barik ala Rahima wa ala ala Rahima anaka minu mujib Rabbin adat fa dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa kina adab al-nar wa akhtam al-salah